Fancy foul ratting? Aegon royalty Terry Doe is using the latest night vision and thermal gear from Infiray to get on top of the hungry rodents. I love shooting rats. I love it. Robert Bucknell's gamekeeper has a thermal spotter on loan from Pulsar he's using on foxes and he won't give it back. Couldn't tell exactly how far away a fox is. Which is the reason I need one, really. <laughs> <laughs> I find out about steel shot in old guns while Nigel Farage gets candid about shooting. I think after about a dozen cartridges, I'll be on the floor. David brings you the news on the news stump and James is all over YouTube videos in this week's Hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Why do rats give us the heebie-jeebies? He's in the feeder. Oh. I bagged him. Is it because they're scuttling scaly-tailed disease bundles? Is it that they're just too clever for their own good? There he is. Oh, no, he's dragging him off. Look. Or they'll do anything to survive, showing no scruples, having a good old gnaw on your neighbour. Look at that. I absolutely assure you he's not doing that to resuscitate him. Shooting rats is my all-time favourite thing to do. I love shooting rats. I love it. Thanks to infrared technology, we'll be able to shoot and study these wonderful little rodents at a safe distance at this fancy fowl yard. The rats here have got everything they need. They've got shelter, food and water. And hate them though I do, you have to admire them because if they have those three things anywhere, pretty much, they'll exploit them and you'll have rats. And they've got a lot of rats here. Are you squeamish we'll see about them. rats then? Not remotely squeamish, but I'm not an idiot. I don't pick them up with my hands. I pick them up with a litter picker thing. I, I've studied them. Over 40% of brown rats carry vile disease, plus other pathogens. You have to be, you have to respect what they can do to you. So it's no good being all butch and picking them up with your hands. People pick them up by the tips of their tails, which is what they drag through yeah. all the viral infected wee and, and mud and water and stuff that, that, that they run through all the time. Two of my friends and two of the dogs that friends have owned have had Viles disease and they used to call it in the old days, they called it rat catchers yellows because it's, uh, it shuts down, I think it's the liver, I always get the liver and the kidney mixed up, I think it's the liver and you go yellow because it doesn't do its job properly. They used to call it rat catchers yellows because they all had it in, in you know, Victorian Edwardian times. It's not a pleasant thing. It really isn't a pleasant thing, and uh, I'm the sort of, I wouldn't look good in yellow, would I? Let's be honest. <laughs> you know, a, a healthy tan I'm okay with, but, you know, bright yellow, I, I look more like Homer Simpson than I do now. For many of you, Terry will need no introduction. For those of you who have never met El Tal, some say the former editor-in-chief of Air Gun World sprinkles 177s on his Weetabix and has three teaspoons of 2-2 in his tea. Make that small kill out. Earlier in the day, Perfect. Terry had Absolutely. taken the RTI Arms P3 oh, yeah. air rifle to the range to get everything set up oh, and prepared. This is the Tube TD70L version 2 day night scope from Infrared. Basically, it's a, a night vision scope that works in the daytime. It's got variable reticles on it, it's got superb clarity of vision. It's got magnification up to 22 from 5.5. Love the plane. You've got to love the plane. That's probably Charlie's private jet we're listening to that. That's what it is. That's what it is. There he is waving out the back. Yeah, side lever. For some bonkers reason, the lever's on the left-hand side. Only one that I know of it is, but you get used to that. Fully regulated. 14-shot 177, heavily silenced. But the real deal is this thing. The first time I've used it was this very morning. I've been busy all day, been very busy, and here's, here's what I've achieved. Oh. You see, there's the reticle, and there's all my aim points. Because the scope is a fair distance from the barrel, you get a sort of a sight line, flight line disparity which is great for longer range shots, not so brilliant for the close range stuff, but I'm making no excuses. They're gonna be rested shots. I'm gonna know where they are and every pellet will land within 
a 177 pellet diameter of where I want it to land. As well as the day-night TD70L V2 scope, we have at our disposal the Infure IEH35 thermal spotter, which will be operated by our friend and colleague Dan, who, thanks to the new audio capabilities, will unwittingly be providing commentary. Oh, he's ready. Go and have it. He's ready. As Terry also enjoys his carp fishing, he has come prepared with a comfortable seat. He also has comfortable shoes. That's a burden he has to bear in the name of charity. Here's something that's brilliantly simple and it should be universal. This is an infrared torch, okay, an infrared lamp. Normally, to make sure they're off, you actually have to be looking through the, the night vision unit itself. But here's a mad idea someone's come up with. Look, a little light on the back to tell you whether it's on or off, because the only other way of doing it is staring at down the wrong end of it and seeing a glowing filament, which you should never, ever, ever do. So that is brilliant, simply brilliant. Right. So let's start targeting these rats. The hope is they'll get less jumpy as it gets dark. Here he comes. That's him. A, a fine rat, one worth mounting, I think. Not in that way. That's Charlie's champagne bucket? Yeah, yeah, I think it is, yeah. It looks a little small for Charlie's champagne bucket, but um, I think it would accommodate two magna. Here he comes, here he comes. Come out, come out, come out. Come and face me. A little bit more. Here he comes. Come on. A little bit more. Here we go. Rolled him over, lovely. A little bit more, here we go. He's eating him. He's eating him. There's one behind him. Round of applause there from the chicken. <laughs> Very nice. So, all right, chaps, well done. Yeah, thank you. As we're getting some action, Terry needs to reload the 14 shot magazine. He has an easy to remember pellet checking technique. See, I'm giving them the, the bogey roll. Oh, right. Yes, yeah, so there is a reason for that. I can feel bent ones. Oh. If you feel, them, feel they're bent, the skirts are bent, and you, you can just dis like discard that. them. It's called bogey. the. The bogey roll technique. That's, I love that. It's very low tech, but um, can't the bin. With a momentary lull, Dan suggests we head through into the next oh, door yard as it's showing promise through the spotter. Stone dead. That's him. Yeah, please get in, that's the biggie. He's right. There's even the rat equivalent of Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible. There he is on the. Let's climb up. Climb him up. Comes on top of the pen, on the cage, second cage, third cage, fourth cage, fifth cage. Oh, there's another one on the top as well, sixth cage. There's, a set, there's one on the top and then, right, it's right on the top, there he is, there he is. Look at the oh, size of him. Good lord, it's a monster. Yeah, I could have done him going down the pipe. He's the rats absolutely keep dead. coming and we keep shooting until rain stops play. Our bucket full of rats has filled nicely. Not all are accounted for with some of the fallen missing, presumed eaten. I'll take these home for Charlie. <laughs> no, it's great to be back. It's really great to be back and doing this. We'll do, um, with your permission, we'll do some, some more stuff. Um, I want to, for myself, I want to I want to leave a bit of a legacy, you know. All these years I've been doing this and, and various forms of air gunning. I'd like to, 
I'd like to pass on what I've learned. I really would. And uh, if I can sort of use your wonderful channel to do that, I'm sure there'll be some stuff out there for people to uh, to enjoy and to help them become better at this wonderful, wonderful sport of ours. It has been an exciting evening with great results. Solid preparation and good kit has delivered. For more information about the Infiray range of scopes, including the new TD70L V2 and spotters, go to infirayuk.co.uk, available at all Infiray stockists. Thanks, Terry. Now, in this week's Field Sports Extra, we have a gun maker who has moved house, the godfather of air gunners, and a fox shooter under pressure. Now is not the time to say how much it cost, in case Mel watches. <laughs> Plus, we gave away a £150 shooting lesson kindly donated by the Oxford Gun Company, and we're giving away a £99 Bergara seat. Easiest way to win is to join the Field Sports Nation, and we'll send you a goodie box link below. Next, from King Rat to our own Tinkerbell, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The Welsh Government has ignored a huge public consultation on plans to licence the release of game birds and now plans to licence it by the back door. That's the accusation from countryside organisations after government countryside agency Natural Resources Wales announced plans to introduce game bird licensing by 2025. A survey on birds licensing received more than 42,000 responses. Basque says the Welsh Government took only a small sample of views from its survey in order to twist the result. Basque is now considering taking legal action against the game bird licensing plan. If this was all to go ahead, and it's not a done deal yet, uh, we'd have a general licence in place for game bird releasing in Wales. You'd have to abide by those terms and conditions. And here's the catch. It will be the anti-shooting Welsh Minister, Julie James, making the decisions of whether to issue a general licence or whether to revoke it. We can see what's going to happen there. An ex-shooting Times writer has had his gun seized by police after posting a tweet about his improved mental health. Matt Cross, a freelance writer and author living in Scotland, wrote this tweet on his social media feed last week. The next day he received a phone call from the firearms and licensing officer from his local police. A day later, he was visited by two officers who took away his three legally held shotguns and two rifles, seen here in pictures that Matt took just before the seizure took place. Matt says Police Scotland has given him no explanation, apart from saying that the tweet about his mental well-being caused concern. He will have to undergo a suitability review before getting his guns returned. Police Scotland has not commented. And it seems that the bar is so high, you can't even say, I felt quite sad for a while. Like, you can't say that. If you're a gamekeeper, you're a deer stalker, you're somebody like that, you can't say that, because if you do, the police are going to come and take your guns. It's a dark day for rural livelihoods. That's the verdict of Scotland's landowners and countryside organisations, furious that the Scottish Government are to press ahead with a ban on using humane snares to trap predators. Ross Ewing from Scottish Land and Estates gave evidence to the Rural Affairs Committee about the proposed ban this week. Scotland's rural community has asked for humane cable restraints to be permitted to allow control of foxes and other pests from damaging wildlife and animal stocks. Britain's rural communities are stuck in a digital divide. A new study from mobile network Vodafone has revealed nearly half of Britain's rural areas lack high quality connectivity to the nationwide mobile network. It describes many countryside locations as 5G not spots. It will take another decade to expand coverage to 99% of the UK. Those living and working in the countryside and on the receiving end of this poor coverage are only too aware of the benefits that the fast rollout of a 5G network could bring to their community. And it is time they are connected. There's a new Secretary of State for the Environment after a government reshuffle this week. Stephen Barclay MP replaces Therese Coffey in the role. In July this year, we replaced Coffey with a cauliflower after she failed to turn up at the Game Fair Theatre to talk to Charlie. His voting record shows him generally in favour of the badger coal, and he consistently votes to sell off Forestry England. He also welcomes crackdowns on poaching. Politicians in Victoria are considering using game meat to feed the poor. 
Jeff Borman of the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party said the Australian hunters shot more than 120,000 deer in 2022, but many of the animals never made it into the food chain. His Hunters for the Hungry initiative proposes supplying free meat to the homeless. He says a similar initiative in New Zealand has contributed more than four tonnes of high quality game meat to food banks. In the UK, the Country Food Trust is a world leading charity supplying game and venison to food banks. Conservation industry lobbying has dashed hopes of closer trading ties between the EU and Africa. The EU's policies on wildlife are among reasons Namibia can't sign a pan-African treaty with Europe. The EU has been pushing for the treaty as a reaction to China's increasing ties with African countries. Among problems Namibia has with the treaty is a call for the destruction of ivory stockpiles as part of combating wildlife trafficking. The EU had a similar treaty with OACPS, the Organisation of African, Caribbean and Pacific States, which expired. It has now introduced anti-conservation measures in the new version. DEFRA has downgraded avian flu from high risk to medium in a review. The disease, which affects both wild birds and livestock, was considered a major risk to Britain's bird life. There's been just one case of the disease in the past month in England and another one in Scotland since the start of October. DEFRA announces that those working with birds should remain vigilant and continue to take precautions. A new warning has gone out to drivers in Norway after a spike in deer collisions. On a single day last week, there were 19 reports of deer-related RTAs on Norway's rural road network. Winter months with poor visibility are the worst. Last year, nearly 16,000 deer and moose were recorded killed on Norway's roads. Thanks to Per Holmseth for the story. And finally, British Olympic shooter Abby Ling has launched a campaign to help fund her dream of shooting for her country. Abby from Somerset is a former British record holder in Olympic Trap and a former clay shooter of the year. She is fully self-funded and needs to raise enough money to help her get to Paris for next year's games. Her husband Ed, the former world and European junior champion, won bronze at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games and is also likely to be going to Paris. Link below. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Next, Robert Bucknell gets to cope with the newfangled thermal technology, fox shooting in Essex. Essex fox shooter Robert Bucknell has got his hands on the latest thermal kit from Pulsar, the Telos XP50 monocular and the binocular Merger, both with a built-in laser rangefinder. Robert and his gamekeeper, John, have been giving the units a thorough test in the field. John is so impressed with the Telos that he's dreading having to give it back. Hey! Hey! Yes, John is our keeper here, has been for a little while now. Uh, super keen fox shooter. He's used 223 for quite some while and been very successful with that and he's now gone over to a tour for Ruger. 32 grain bullet at 4,200 feet a second. Uh, it doesn't drop much, and so it's allowing him to hey. not have to guesstimate distances. <laughs> Very flat shooting, and this is why John's getting all excited, because he now can tell exactly how far away a fox is. Which is the reason I need one, really. <laughs> 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 but, um... No, yeah, brilliant. It is perfect combination. Yeah. And the scope on it is a XQ50. It's the Fermion 2 Pulsar. And again, that is more than I'll ever need on top of the gun. I usually 
go and wait out. I sit out in a place where I think there may be a fox or there is a fox, and I'll wait there for, well, sometimes after five hours. So that's, that's the way I do it. Because you don't really have to go look for them because they don't know you're there, they come to you. Which is the good thing about the thermals, is they have no clue. He actually achieved over a hundred straight. He shot a hundred foxes without a miss. Some of them he had to use second shot on, but he hit a hundred foxes without a miss, which is Wait. not bad going. Usually I get to a hundred by New Year's Eve. I'm usually scrapping around trying to get to the hundred mark, but this year I think I'll be all right. But you have been fox poaching, haven't you? Yes. Because they ain't all here. You're the no, 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 that's... <laughs> I have, what's well, this, like six different places. <laughs> so if I get desperate, I just go around them all. Right. It'll start off here, goes yeah. round, and then he goes and, and toddles over various places. He, yeah. He does have permission. Yeah, I do have permission, yeah. <laughs> I'll get in about yeah. four, half four, and then get up again for work. <laughs> so... But... The, the kit now is, is so successful, but again, from the safety point of view, from uh, you know, it, it's going to make you even more efficient if that's possible. These days, especially after lockdown, we've got people that are wandering around with a dog or something at some silly times in the night, and without a lamp, they don't know you're there. I was sitting in a high seat in a, in a tr um, oak tree, well hidden and looking across, and there's two people, the dogs are running loose. When they got to 50 metres, I just did the normal greeting of, good evening, uh, can you put your dogs on a lead? And they're going... Because they're a little upset because somebody obviously can see them and what they're doing, and then they put the dog on the lead and say, thank you very much, if you can keep them on the lead in the future, that'd be most kind. And, and just that sheer effect of going, I'm being viewed, and I don't know where, that uh, has that uh, effect that hopefully in the future they will keep the dog on the lead or they won't be there. So thermal is, is such a good thing in so many different ways. This kit now is able to identify the difference between a fox and a muntjac and a couple of hares together easily at four or five hundred yards. It's just, just amazing stuff. And so your speed of acquisition is so much quicker. You can scan through and you, oh, what am I looking at? And whereas this old thing, you'd stand there and I'll oh, wait till it moves, what's it doing? Um, I'll give it a squeak, see what happens. This, you, you go through and you think, oh, it's that. It's just instant feedback. Can you see those deer out there at 877 metres? <laughs> you, you see the spinny there, the long, what I call runway spinny, which is, is... So we've now got to the stage, but that then means, what am I going to do about it? Because one thing is the acquisition of what you're, you're you know, great as a fox, brilliant, that's what I'm looking for. But this kit allows you to take those long shots. What sort of distance can you tell the difference between a hare, a um, a fox and a munchak, say? At 800 yards easily, I would say. Right. Yeah. So the, your, your identification... That's as far as I've looked yeah. with it. And, you know, I can ID the difference between a hare and a rabbit at over 500. Right. So it's that good. <laughs> it is that good. It makes life easy then. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Yeah. He keeps very moaning good. his needs one. I do need one, yeah, yeah, you know. To find out more about the latest Pulsar thermals, go to UK distributor thomasjacks.co.uk, link below. Thanks, Robert and John. Now, Hick Micro has a new film out. Here's Dan Chart to introduce it. Welcome to Uxbridge here in the UK. Behind me, at this rather impressive building, is Hike Micro's London office. Today we are here to have a look at two rather impressive new units. This is our Condor, it's our latest product. It's a laser range finding thermal imager. 
beautifully ergonomic. We've got a range finding button there, which operates our range finder here. It's a thousand meter range, actually within one meter. The detection range of this unit, which is the CQ50, is 2,600 meters. This unit is absolutely superb. There is nothing better on the market, in our opinion, in terms of function, feel, design, quality, quality of image. It's all there. Here we have the Hike Micro Thunder Zoom. What's different about this from other scopes is that it is a true optical zoom. So traditionally, digital rifle scopes have relied on digital zoom. That means that when you zoom in, whilst with things like Image Pro or Zoom Pro, you maintain a decent quality image, it is still a digital zoom. You're zooming in on those pixels. When I say optical zoom, this is zoom in the traditional sense, like you might see on a rifle scope or a camera. By moving this lever, lever here, around to 50, we double the zoom on this optic. You don't lose any quality of image whatsoever by doing so. Click on the link below to watch more of that. Next up, you may think that your old gun has had it once steel shot comes along. Not so fast, say the blacker boys, as I find out at a gunsmithing evening in Cornwall. A group of Cornish shooters get together to celebrate the arrival of new resident Jim Blacker and to have a look at his family's extraordinary gun collection. Here's a celebrity shot putting an eight ball to his shoulder. I mean, I tell you what, I wouldn't mind a go with it, but I think after about a dozen cartridges, I'll be on the floor. The Blacker family is remarkable. Bill Blacker is one of the top gun makers in the country, working for lots of other gun makers. Tonight, people have brought along their guns for the Blackers to look at, and here's an interesting one. So, I've got an attic find here that was presented to me because it wasn't on anybody's certificate. Yeah. Um, so, I contacted Devon Cornwall Police, give them the details, and uh, got it put on my certificate. So, I've got 12 ball with two different sets of barrels. Right. I've cleaned it up a little bit and I was yep. hoping you could just tell me a little bit more about yeah, it. Yeah, it could have been a, a paradox originally. Yeah. Looks like the paradox has been taken out at the end. So what's the paradox then? Paradox was the last uh, inch and a half inch of rifling. Okay. So they fired a solid bullet through the bore uh -huh. and it twisted it towards the end, which gave it that extra accuracy and power towards the end. Okay. So what we used to do was uh, was all of the centres of the breech end, of the nose end, so that we could get them on point of aim at a target. Okay. But because the loads weren't that pressurised, uh -huh. we could only get a certain distance to get accuracy. Oh, so, yes, that, that was the reason why. Um, I would say that they went from that, obviously shooting uh, game birds mm -hmm. or partridge, pheasant, uh, pigeon, whatever, then they went to this to shoot in maybe uh, wild boar or uh, um, other types of oh, uh, just bigger game. Well, I wouldn't buy a second gun, I'd have a second set They of put it in it. Yeah. This but barrel is, you can feel the weight from that to that in, oh, is yeah. significantly stronger because of the round that went through it. Yeah. So would I be able to shoot steel shot with these barrels then? You will do. Not in the original state of it being paradox. Okay. Because the paradox, you couldn't drive Steel shot being not compressible like lead, it wouldn't squeeze its way through uh, the rifling, okay. so it couldn't drive its way through. But we would need to measure the bores that there was up to these uh, sizes and dimensions that would release the shot, the steel shot through the bore without causing extra pressure on the face of the gun. Most barrels with bowed sticks shoot standard steel shot, so standard pressure, as long as it meets the requirements, so no more than half choke. Um, the bore sizes are correct, the chambers aren't too tight. If your barrels don't meet requirement, we can sleeve or we can make new barrels. But as long as we believe that the action's strong enough, we'll give it a chance. We'll, we can give everything a chance. And we, we strongly believe yeah. that English guns are strong enough yeah. and, and, yeah. Are, and are powerful enough. The big message of this evening is that if you think your gun won't shoot steel, the chances are it probably will. It might take a tweak or even a bit more than that by a good quality gunsmith, but, say the blackers, don't cash it in until you find out. If we see your gun rolling, we believe that it will pass steel shot and we don't need to do any work for it. You'll just pay for the proof, the mm -hmm. carriage and bits and bobs, and we're happy to inspect any guns people are, will have 
for free yeah. to see if they're still shot worthy. And if they won't meet it? Um, then, then, then there's other, it, it can be, they would need jointing where you tighten the barrels to action. Mm -hmm. You could need your barrel sleeve in. Which, which chokes removing. Yeah, chokes removing. Okay. Chambers lengthening. If they needed sleeving, you could be for an English gun. Uh, and, and our work is best quality, so you would be anywhere between two and four thousand pounds. Even forcing cones. Yeah, in forcing cones. There's so much for stuff we can do. There's so many adjustments we can make to English guns, mm -hmm. uh, or to all guns, um, you, that, that, that will get them through, still shot, make them up to spec, uh, and, and we're. we're we're very confident in in our in in the British gun making and trade. And we, we strongly believe, and it must go across to the British shooter or the world shooters that our guns are the best in the world, mm -hmm. and the old guns are adjustable to fit and to um, comply to the new rules as long as a qualified gun maker, gunsmith that has got um, some credibility can adjust these guns and they will have a very very fair chance of passing proof. Mm. A very rough sort of idea on it I would say this was worth with two pairs of barrels probably around two to three thousand pound. The uh, reason being is that these barrels are very rare, the Damascus is in good order, mm -hmm. Wesley Richards being a very excellent old gun making firm mm -hmm. uh, of extreme quality yeah. um, and the rare ability being that, that one's paradox and one's uh, normal shot yeah. and uh, you, can, you can't get this gun very often, yeah. it's, a, it's a gun that uh, very rarely appears. Yes. Plus, very plus, happy, yeah. Plus, plus thank you. For more from the Blackers and for the gun-making label they own, George Dorr, there's a link below. Thanks to all who took part in that. Now from guns to this week's field tester and we're looking at crispy boots. Tell us about the, the crispy boots that you've got then. You're quite impressed with them. Yeah, super impressed. So we just added crispy to our range of footwear in May and they have to be honest been flying out the door ever since. We've got the crispy hunter boots which have been branded as um, hill slippers by some but these ones are the ones that have been the best sellers for us so far. So this is the crispy highland pro. It's a Gore-Tex gaiter molded over the top of a Gore-Tex boot. So if you have a look inside you've got a boa lay system easy to pull out, press in, tighten up and so you can get that super tight so you're not going to have any space around the ankles, not going to be any rubbing or anything. You've then got a T-zip which I think is like a dry suit zip basically, it's what it reminds me of, I don't know if you can see that. Um, so that's fully watertight and then on the outside you've got, uh, this is actually Cordura that's woven with um, Kevlar so super robust and fully fully waterproof so you've essentially got two waterproof membranes one on top of the other these are amazing for going through gorse heather we actually had a woman who um, was from tasmania who came and bought a pair on tuesday and her reason for buying them was she has to wear gaiters to work and it was actually safety against snakes although snakes aren't a problem we do obviously have other um beasties to contend with so these are also great if you're um, wanting to protect yourself against ticks you obviously don't have any um, space between your trousers and your boots in terms of price point these are 525 they also do a um, slightly cheaper pair that's the Highland HPs so again it's a fully integrated Gore-Tex gaiter over the top of the boot um, these are 395 and they have slightly different features so instead of the t-zip on this these have a standard ykk zip but they have a gusset just to make sure that there's no water getting through that and then internally they've got a speed lace system different to the boa system and um, so you do have two different options depending on what you want to use them for what your budget is really one thing that both boots have as well is they've actually got a, a rocker in the, the sole, so it helps you to propel forward. And uh, when I first tried them on, I was like, whoa, off I go. And so 
These woods really are made for walking. You've just got to get your body to keep up. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. Now from boots to the wider world of hunting and shooting, it's my old mate James Marchington with Hunting YouTube. There's a ton of new hunting and shooting videos appeared on YouTube this week, some better than others. Here are the ones I reckon are well worth a look. First, for pure escapism, this one's hard to beat. It's from Sean James, an outdoorsman living in a log cabin he built himself in the Canadian wilderness. He keeps the talking to a minimum to let the natural sounds shine through. And in this episode, he's cooking duck breasts on the wood stove and making his first outings of the deer bow hunting season. Next to Australia and a very different type of film that feels more like an FPV video game, Jack is shooting camels in the outback. He explains this isn't hunting, it's culling an invasive non-native species. As he goes, he talks through the challenges faced by gun owners in Western Australia, which sound uncomfortably similar to the UK. Staying down under the South Island, rifle walkers are living up to their name, trudging around New Zealand's mountainous Fiordland National Park in search of a bull elk. They camp out in a ferocious storm and get close to the biggest deer they've ever encountered. But should they take the shot? Back to the UK and Wash Wildfowler is out with Robin from Team Foxer, flighting duck on Boxing Day last year, something that's become a bit of a Christmas tradition tradition for him. A mixture of night vision and shot cam footage captures the action. That Robin gets about a bit. He also pops up in this one from David of Predator Protection UK. The intrepid duo head off into the Forest of Dean in search of squirrels, foxes, wild boar and more. They have quite an adventure and end up shooting a fallow buck with badly tangled antlers. Field Sports with Speed has organised a driven game day at the Winscombe shoot in Dorset. He's filming rather than shooting himself, but he has a great time enjoying the atmosphere and camaraderie of the day in beautiful scenery. Next, here's the latest from the TGS Outdoors gun review series. Johnny and friends pit the latest PCP air guns against Rimfire cartridge rifles, then take a look at some classic Winchester hunting rifles, dive into Spanish gun factories, and get techy about ballistics. Finally, talking of air guns, Andrew from AM Bushcraft returns after a break with, as he puts it, a whole new attitude. It's good to see him back at it, shooting a heap of rats around the farm and promising more shooting action and kit reviews in the weeks to come. Well, that's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the i symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link. James M at fieldsportschannel.tv. And that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please visit over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address into our register page, and we'll contact you about this show. Field Sports Britain is at 7 pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been. Field Sports Britain, good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.